Order members, order. It is my sad duty to advise the House formally of the death of David McClarty and to report that I have notified the Chief Electoral Officer in accordance with Northern Ireland Act 1998 that a vacancy exists in East Londonary constituency that Mr McClarty has served well. I intend to pay my own tribute to David in a few moments, after which I will call a representative from each of the parties to speak for up to five minutes. I will allow around 45 minutes for tributes, and if there is enough time remaining after all the parties have spoken, I may be able to call other members who rise in their places to say a few words. The sitting then will be suspended for approximately 30 minutes as a mark of respect for our late friend and colleague. And I want to say to members, I'll be reasonably relaxed about the time. Uh, if we run over slightly 45 minutes, I'm still reasonably relaxed because I know there is a number of members who want to pay their own tribute. I do have a list at the table which I will take to so the list of the table. Members don't have to rise in their place. And after we deal with that list, then if members just indicate by rising in their places, we will call them. Much has been said and written since David McClarty sat passing in the early hours of Good Friday morning, all of which reflects the high esteem with which he was held in this house. David fought strongly for all he believed in, but all of the while he remained a true gentleman. In this house, like any parliament, we will have our differences. But David showed you could express them in a way which maintained strong personal relationships on all sides of this chamber. Undoubtedly, his brilliant wit assisted him in that. It was because of that sense of humour that I'd asked David to act as master of ceremonies for my annual functions here in Parliament buildings. David could always be relied on to provide light relief and put people at ease, no matter what the situation was. And he combined it with a firm but fair authority when presiding over this House as a Deputy Speaker, a role in which I greatly enjoyed uh, working with him. And I can remember in 2012, along with Judith Cochran, David accompanied me to sign an agreement with the Assembly of Kosovo. Uh, some members might know here we work closely with that particular assembly in Kosovo, and that work is very much ongoing uh, today. And watching how he spoke passionately to elected members from a region uh, with its own troubled history, I was struck, struck by that trip, both how great an ambassador he was for this assembly, but also by how proud he was of his involvement here since his election in 1998. But as well as his public life, David was also a family man, a fine singer, and of course, a comedy actor. He loved the stage. And of course, his great love for his native constituency of East Londonderry. And this afternoon, we give our sincere condolences to David's wife, Norma, his sons, Colin and Al, and the wider family circle. David was a true parentarian, a colleague, and very much a dear friend. And I know I speak for the whole House when I say we shall miss him deeply. Gregory Campbell. Mr Campbell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And uh, it is with sadness that I too rise to uh, acknowledge the uh, work and the life of David McLarty. It was with great sadness that I and others heard of his uh, passing on Good Friday, as you have alluded to. Um, I knew David McLarty for some 20 years or thereabouts. Uh, both in local government and then as a political opponent in the uh, Northern Ireland Assembly here and also at Westminster elections. And he was, as has been described by many people, uh, a parliamentarian and a gentleman. Uh, in fact, the number of people who have spoken to me since his death and have said things like, he was a very difficult man to dislike. And he was a very difficult man to dislike because uh, of his gentlemanly way of dealing with people, and he did that both privately and publicly. And I'm sure we all pass on our condolences to his wife, Norma, uh, his close family circle. I was in their home be before the funeral and did so, and I know that they are comforted by all of the uh, tributes that have been paid. 
Uh, one thing that uh, sticks with me, Mr. Speaker, is, and I think it was a mark of the man. I remember many years ago when I first, uh, one of the first elections I fought in East Londonderry, and we were canvassing in the area where David lived. Um, one of uh, my colleagues in my party thought they would advocate that I should uh, canvass in a particular part of the estate, which just happened to be where David lived, and I didn't know that. And I think they deliberately put me in his direction. But I, I rang the doorbell, and his wife came out and uh, said, oh, Gregory, it's yourself. Uh, can you just wait a second? And of course, then David came out, because he, I think he had finished his canvassing for the evening. And of course, we all know at election time, it gets very difficult and fraught, and opponents can, can have sharp words. And we had a very friendly discussion, at the end of which David said, do you want to come in for a cup of coffee? And that was just the mark of the man, a political opponent, and yet he was prepared to offer and sit down for a cup of coffee. We will all deeply miss the wit, the humour, the charm of David McClarty, and we pay tribute to him today. Martin McGuinness. Mr. McGuinness. Uh, good morning, uh, Ken Collier. Well, I too rise with great sadness to acknowledge the loss to this House of a highly respected member, David McClarty. Whatever about the loss to this house, it's a tremendous loss for his wife Norma, for his sons Alan and uh, Colin, and for his three grandchildren. Of course, I have only known David through the uh, work that we've been doing uh, in this body since this uh, body was formed. And uh, whilst uh, in the course of many uh, deliberations that take place here, uh, many uh, words uh, uh, are expressed sometimes in a very hostile way. Uh, that was never David McClarty's way. He was an absolute gentleman, someone who wasn't just respected, but who was, I think, deeply loved for his very progressive and good-hearted spirit. I, I was very pleased to attend his uh, funeral uh, in Coleraine at Cologne uh, Parish Church, uh, and to see the tremendous turnout from the people of the constituency, which I know as East Derry, but many others prefer to know as East London Derry. And David was a very proud unionist, where he was, as he clearly was at one stage, a member of the Ulster Unionist Party, and then in turn, as an independent unionist, he was a unionist to his backbone. But he was someone who was, I think, very highly respectful of all traditions within our society. In his role as Deputy Speaker here in the Assembly, he always was very fair and, uh, and ensured that everybody had the opportunity to speak. I was very firm whenever there were those who attempted to prevent that happening. So I think that in concert with all of the others in this Assembly, it is important to say that we will, uh, we will miss him. Uh, he was hugely respected by all of us. I had occasions uh, on a number of times to meet with him uh, outside of uh, the Assembly and the work of Parliament buildings at uh, different events, sometimes church events in my own city, and always found him very decent and very courteous and very, very likable. He was someone who was very much into amateur dramatics, but he never brought any of those dramatics into this assembly. He was always very conscious of the very responsible role that MLAs have to give proper example to people uh, outside to show that this was an institution that could work, and not alone was an, an institution could work, but it was an institution where people could actually get on with one another. We still have a bit of a journey to go in relation to that, but I think if we all see the example that he set as an example that all of us should follow, then this would be a far, far better place. So my final thoughts are with his wife Norma, with Colin, with Alan, with their wives and their children. Uh, I think that uh, David made an enormous contribution to uh, our politics, and he will be always very, very fondly remembered by all of us. Mr. McDonald. Mr. McDonald. Mr. Speaker. And I'm, it's bittersweet, I'm saddened that we have to today pay tribute. But equally, I'm glad that you've accorded us the opportunities to pay tribute.
to my late friend, indeed our late friend and valued colleague, David McClarty. And I welcome the opportunity to formally, in the House, express my condolences and the condolences of the SDLP to Norma, to Alan and to Colin. In political terms, David was a staunch unionist, and I wouldn't want anything I say to be somehow or other misinterpreted or take from that. But he was not tribal. He was always reaching out, cons conciliating others with whom who he was opposed or perhaps who were opposed to each other. He presented his robust unionist position in a most civilised, tolerant and openly inclusive way. He was respect, genuinely respected by all and he, he, gen, he, sorry, he genuinely respected all and was in turn respected by all. He was a very proud son of Coleraine, very loyal, very committed, and even prouder of Killowan, his neighbourhood within Coleraine. It was his town land, it was his village, it was his community. He had community loyalty, intense community loyalty to Killowan and Coleraine, but he wasn't parochial and he wasn't narrow in that loyalty. He was a proud Ulster man. He was determined to play his full part in seeing the peace process feed into a prosperity process that would benefit all. I, on many occasions, had the privilege of working with him, serve, whether serving in committees or, or, or in whatever role uh, we happened to be thrust together. But he, we shared a broad common interest in seeing investment, economic development and prosperity. Uh, succeed here. On one occasion I had the, the, the privilege of working with him and travelling with him on a trade mission when uh, Lord, <coughs> M Lord MP was Minister for Detty, and it was a privilege to work with him on that occasion. Equally, Mr Speaker, I felt very privileged to be able to attend his funeral and listen to the many, many tributes that you yourself were there and, sh and shared in. Uh, but I, 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 which I, those tributes I fully concurred with. I learned there that David had very robust and family connections. I met uh, Norma again. I'd met her before. I met his sons again, and I met a number of his brothers. It was very clear in that, in talking to the family members, why David was what David was. His, his very robust family, family uh, network was evident there. I also learned of his deep Christian convictions and his connection to the church. Mr. Speaker, we will all miss him. The place is quieter and sadder and emptier without him. But I hope that he's happy. I hope that he's in a better place. Thank you very much. Mike Nesbitt. Mr. Nesbitt. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Like, like you, I attended Killowan Church of Ireland Parish Church last week for David's funeral service, and I know many uh, MLAs were in the crowd, and what a crowd, Mr. Speaker. The church was full, the church hall was full, Killowan Street on the west bank uh, of the ban uh, was crowded. And I know from speaking to the family afterwards, they took great comfort from the fact that so many people wished to demonstrate their respect <coughs> for David McClarty, that they made their way to Coleraine. Uh, for that service of remembrance. The family was truly pleased. Few families could dare imagine that their loved one was so genuinely popular as David. For most of his life, David McClarty was an Ulster Unionist, a positive, a progressive politician who felt in his very fibre the essence of the Belfast Agreement, the need to build trust, mutual respect, parity of esteem, the core values uh, that bring us here today. And in the spirit of building that shared future, I wish to acknowledge the presence of the Deputy First Minister at the funeral last week. I know many surprised themselves by going out of their way to make sure that Martin McGuinness felt welcome. As many did for me when I attended Clonard Monastery for the Requiem Mass last year for Father Alec Reid and in Down Patrick for the service uh, uh, for Eddie McGrady. It might indeed Mr. Speaker, be a fitting tribute to David McClarty's memory that we start showing the same respect to each other in life uh, as we do in death. Mr. Speaker, when the First Assembly sat in 98, uh, David McClarty was part of a team, the Ulster Unionist team, and I know he loved this party to his core. 
He preceded me into this chamber by 13 years, and it is a matter of everlasting regret to me that I never had the chance to sit beside him as a colleague. I can think of no one I would rather have had at my side in group meetings upstairs or here in this chamber for debates. But it was not to be by the time I got here. He had gone to sit in that corner uh, as an independent, uh, not having been selected to run again as a unionist in 2011. What happened to David McClarty then should not have happened. And to his family and his friends who were so badly hurt by those events, I am glad to take this opportunity to publicly say sorry. When I did get here, David may have been sitting apart, but he never ignored me. Often he went out of his way when he didn't need to, uh, to demonstrate public support, and sometimes, thankfully not so often, he let it be known when he disagreed with me, uh, but always privately. Equally privately, inquiries were made to see whether he might come back, but in typical fashion, the message I received was that he had stood as an independent, uh, and he would not abuse his relationship with the electorate by switching in midstream. What might have happened in the next election is now beyond academic. Mr. Speaker, I was looking at David's website last night, and the home page says all you need to know about the man, for the first words are these. Thank you. It reads, thank you for taking the time to browse this site. I hope you find it interesting and useful. I've been a member of the Northern Ireland Assembly since 1998, and it has always been my intention to serve all the people of East London Derry to the very best of my ability and resources. In attitude and application, David McClarty was a success. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I wish to float an idea, an idea for a fitting act of remembrance for David, a man who was incredibly proud of Coleraine, his constituency, and the North Coast. It's an area steeped in sporting tradition, home to the local Irish league side, Coleraine FC, the area is also the home of the Milk Cup, which David was a great supporter of. It's blessed with many great golf courses, of course, and next week it will welcome the Giro d'Italia, and in two weeks it will host the world-famous Northwest 200. And on Saturday, there was a minute's applause for David before the start of the Coleraine and Ghana Swifts match. I'm told one of the most poignant sights was the bouquet of flowers and two blue and white scarves tied to the front of the railway end at the very spot where David could be found every other Saturday supporting his beloved Coleraine FC. So, Mr. Speaker, with the family's blessing, I suggest we ask the organisers of the Milk Cup to consider naming a trophy, perhaps one for fair play and sportsmanship, in memory of David McClarty, MLA. Uh, our thoughts were with his wife, Norma, and with his family. David Ford. Mr. Ford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it is indeed both a sadness and a pleasure to have the opportunity to pay tribute today to David McClarty, a man whom you correctly described at the beginning as a friend and a colleague to all of us here. One of the minority in this place who was first elected in 1998 and had remained in continuous membership, of one who had an impact in the chamber, as I know from serving with him in committees, because most of all in recent time, though not in this session, as Deputy Speaker, and indeed in both the previous and the current session as a member of the British Irish Parliamentary Assembly, where he was a very fine representative of the best side of this assembly in the work that he was doing to represent his cause without denigrating the cause which other people believed in as well. But he was also a man of many other parts, not just an actor on the political stage, but very much an actor on the amateur dramatic stage. As Mike Nesbitt has just said, a man who is a passionate supporter of Coleraine FC, uh, in all that conveyed for the, his town. And his, clearly his passion for politics was very much a passion for those whom he represented, and not just for the institutions here. He was passionate about East London Derry. He was passionate about Coleraine. He was perhaps most passionate of all about Cologne in terms of those who he worked with and those who he cared for and those whom he sought to represent. Reference has been made for the fact that he was previously a party politician and there's no doubt that whilst he was a member of the Ulster Unionist Party, he was a loyal member of that party and defended its cause. But when I was paying a visit to Coleraine during the last assembly election campaign, I met David in the diamond in Coleraine 
and it was absolutely clear from the quality of the engagement he had with the people of the town as he engaged in conversation, as he canvassed in the most informal kind of way, how positive a relationship he had. It was no surprise whatsoever that he was able to be re-elected as an independent because he was far more than the party label he bore. And I suspect there aren't many of us in this place who could be re-elected as independents the way he did. And it was also very clear that despite the fact that he was canvassing, he was very happy to have a few minutes chat with the Alliance team in the Diamond that day as well and treat people as friends and colleagues, even if we had political differences. That's a measure of the man, and it's a measure of how much respect he held for others and for the democratic process, as indeed we saw at his funeral, the immense turnout showing the respect that his constituents and his political colleagues from right across Northern Ireland had for him. On behalf of my colleagues in this place and in Coleraine, I extend my sympathy to his wife Norma, to his sons, and to the wide family circle in the great loss that they have suffered. Bartle McRae. Mr. McRae. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I knew David well. Uh, he and I were in the Ulster Unionist Party for a long time together, and he, along with my colleagues, John McAllister and I, used to sit in a little conclave and talk about the future and what things might look uh, about if we did things in a particular way. And one of the really great things I remember about David is that no matter what you were talking about, no matter how serious the subject, he would always have a turn of wit. He would always be able to say a little something to lighten the load, something that you would say, oh, that's funny, and that would just sometimes diffuse things that were getting a little bit heated. And he was a great man in that respect. Uh, I, I knew him also from a, from a family point of view because he was um, in Cologne, and my father lives just beside that and been to the church before. He uh, was very touched personally by the, the, the church service and listening to the family talking. And uh, there's a certain amount of comfort, I think, Mr. Speaker, that came from the fact that David let it be known that he knew that the end was coming and that he was content uh, to move forward and he'd made the sort of arrangements that he wanted to make. And these can be very difficult circumstances, but he, as a man, was able to say to the family, no, um, I'm never more proud of anything other than my family. And I think that's a great sense of, of comfort. When, when people talk about him being on the stage, and um, <laughs> I was always never quite sure which stage David preferred better, whether it was actually the amateur theatrics or in this place. He just loved it. And anybody that's ever been to, and I know that my colleagues have been to, to uh, Ulster Unionist Party conferences, actually David was the star turn usually. That's what we all went for, because he could do almost anything in terms of uh, music or, uh, or telling jokes or whatever. So all of these things are really symbolic of a man who was a man of the people. But the thing that I want to just close on on behalf of the party is to say that we did have a number of conversations, David and I, and John and I, about what would happen when we had left various parties and where would the future go forward. And in fact, he had given a certain amount of encouragement to, to, uh, to certain directions. But ultimately, when we went to talk to him, David said to both John and I, he said, you know, I like you both. He says, we get on, but my responsibility is to the people that elected me. He says, I want to remain an independent. I want to go and speak for those people, for all of the people. And you have to say, that shows great character as an individual. And I think when you uh, look back on somebody's life, because I mean, who knows what happens after, uh, after these things, his wife and his family can take huge pride in the fact that David was not only loved by everybody, he was, was respected by everybody, and during his life, he made a difference to an awful lot of people. Jim Allister. Mr. Allister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I join in the <coughs> tributes which have been properly paid to David McCarty. Probably within this house, I'm one of the people who knew him for a, less, uh, for a lesser period of time than most, in that I didn't really come to know him until I came to this house in 2011. Uh, but having sat beside him for the two years until illness overcame him, when he was here and had many discussions with him about a variety of issues. Obviously, our political emphasis were quite different, uh, but everything that emerged 
from the David McCarthy I got to know bears out what has been said much about him, that he was a gentleman of politics. Uh, on the day he passed uh, away, I said that he was a gentleman of politics, but no pushover. Uh, and thinking about what I would say today, I don't think I can better that in terms of summing him up. He certainly was a gentleman in the manner in which he conducted himself, in the courtesy that he showed to all, in the manner in which he expressed himself. And even sitting nearby him, it was quite obvious from the comings and goings of other members as they passed by, uh, the affection in which he was held. And of course, when he was last with us, last July, uh, we had spontaneous applause for him, which is a mark, I think, of the affection he was held in. Uh, but he was a man of principled views. He held to those, uh, and he was right to do so, uh, and he was no pushover in any sense in regard to those views. He obviously wasn't just held in considerable affection in this House, uh, but by his constituents, by virtue of the fact that he achieved the quite remarkable feat in Northern Ireland politics, uh, and, and quite the rare feat of being elected to this House, indeed the only member elected to this House as an independent, uh, and that uh, was quite a considerable achievement. And I think we are all the poorer for his passing. I think it was also a mark of the man, the resilient way in which he bore his illness. Certainly I would have phoned him from time to time during the past year, and I was always struck by his uplifting tone of optimism and his determination to battle on, but it wasn't to be. Uh, but he certainly has left his mark in this House and in the wider community. Uh, but of course, where he will be missed the most is in the bosom of his family and to his wife Norma uh, and to his two sons and the wider family and there's a considerable family of brothers and sisters. Uh, he was much loved there too. Uh, and as they miss him, as they will continue to miss him. Uh, I think it may be some comfort to know that from across this house, David was someone held in great and genuine affection uh, and someone who certainly made his mark in this house. Thank you. Stephen Agnew. Mr. Agnew. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On behalf of the Green Party in Northern Ireland, I would like to express our sadness in the passing of David McClarty, MLA. I'd like to offer our condolences uh, to his family. On a personal level, uh, he was always willing to, to offer me, uh, as a new MLA, the benefit of his experience as a, as been pointed as an MLA uh, who was continuously elected since 1998, um, and also as, as deputy speaker, um, former deputy speaker. Um, informing me of some of the, the, the kind of ways around the, the, the standing orders and the procedures of this house. I remember the last time speaking to him in this chamber. Um, he came in towards the end of, of, of the term and was, was really talking about his, his road to recovery at, 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 at that time as, as it appeared to be. And, I have some experience of the, the, the kind of journey, the battle against cancer. Uh, this week will mark the, the third anniversary of the death of a close friend of mine who, who, who lost that battle with cancer. And again, I, I sat and had similar conversations with him, the, 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 the hope that you'll defeat the illness. But it's a, it's a cruel illness. Um, uh, your fortunes can turn, and unfortunate for, for, for David. Um, his fortunes did turn, and, and, and he was unable to, to overcome the illness. He, as many have said here, he, he was a true gentleman, and he held strong convictions, but he did so in a dignified manner. He was well-liked, and I, I think it is a mark of the man that he, he was well-liked across all the parties in this chamber, and he had that ability to separate political disagreement from personal relationships, and he always maintained personal relationships. 
in the face of, 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 of disagreement. He clearly was highly regarded within his constituency. Um, the, the support he got both as an Ulster Unionist and as an independent show that, that much of his vote was a vote for him personally, a vote for his hard work and dedication and a, a vote for him uh, as, as, as a person and as a politician. He was, uh, I think it's fair to say, he was a good boy in what has become known as the, the naughty corner of this assembly. Um, and he certainly did uh, keep, keep us in, in check at times and keep us right. Um, and he, he, he is a loss to us in this corner and in this house. Um, who, whoever his replacement might be, they, they will be warmly welcomed here um, uh, by all of us. And um, he certainly will be sadly missed by this assembly. And um, my, my best regards to, to all his family and friends. David McNary. Mr. McNary. I knew David McClarity for many, many years, during which, uh, Speaker, mostly on, on Mondays, he gave me a, a torrid time, uh, taunting me not about politics, but about his beloved Manchester United. It, it was, of course, seriously, seriously good fun. That impish expression that he had of self satisfaction when taunting me. And when Chelsea won, it was a fluke. It was never a penalty, or the, the referee should have gone to Specsavers. But when United won, it was all about their obvious class and skills. Uh, superior in all departments, of course, according to, to David, when rubbing it in. And boy, David, could you rub it in at times. His humor was legend. If we were sitting uh, together as we did uh, over there, or more recently sitting here, his quips were delivered with the grin out of the side of his mouth. And many's a time I had to, and confess, up and leave speaker uh, with my ribs cracking for fear of bursting out loud, very loud, uh, in this house. And we all got a, a mention in the nicest put-down way, which was David McClarity's trademark. It was always the nicest possible way. He let us know just exactly what he was thinking. Today, Speaker, the, the House honours a colleague who showed to us all the differences in politics are not about losing friends, but really about keeping friends. And David, as has been said, was a man of principle, and therein lie a great strength that he had. Good things have been rightly said, and we're all grateful for the good things that have been said today, because they are so richly richly deserved. I think he did know colleagues, and let us all be assured, I think he did know how popular he was with us all. I'm glad of the memories, and I'm sad that they came to an end. May he rest in peace. Order members, we have about 15 minutes left, but uh, as I said, I'm reasonably relaxed about the time this afternoon of the circumstances that we're in in the House. And if members from here on in just rise in their places, uh, I will try and, and call them. McQuillan. Mr. McQuillan. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, can I be associated with uh, the comments made by my colleague Gregory Campbell and all others in the chamber here today about the late David McClarty? First and foremost, David was a committed family man, dedicated to his wife Norma and sons Alan and Colin and his grandchildren and their wives, and it's them who was going to miss him the most. But he also was committed to the town of Coleraine and to the people of Coleraine, who he'd served as a public representative for many years. David and myself differed many times on political matters, but once the debate was over and we left the chamber, you'd always be sure of that smile and his witty comment, 
and that broke all the ice after a, a heated debate. Mr Speaker, but we are also united at 3 o'clock on Saturdays whenever we want to visit our beloved Korean. And we always stood, David stood at the front of the railway end and I stood at the back of the railway end. But going in and out, we always had a comment on how we played and how we should have played and maybe what team we should have picked. But uh, always was a, a great man and a lovely mannered man. Mr Speaker, can I pass on my condolences to his wife, Norma, children, Alan and Colin, and the entire McClarty family? Mr. Hoshi. Last Tuesday, the Deputy First Minister and I, and indeed all shades of political opinion, uh, attended uh, David's funeral in Cologne Parish Church, where we were received very graciously by the congregation, uh, by the minister, and indeed by David's family. David was amiable, he was affable, and he was approachable. He was a colleague, and I like to think of him as a friend. And indeed, when I came to this house first, three years ago, he was very much an advisor. He was pragmatic, he was principled, and he was professional, and he was highly regarded by all the people of our constituency. He was a raconteur, a thespian, and a troubadour, and his days with the Ballywoodland players, and indeed in the church choirs, probably laid a good foundation for his time as a deputy speaker here. He was famous for his jokes and his stories, and he was a fan of the Milk Cup, that competition, which is so great, uh, particularly in the East Area constituency. He was also a fan of Man United, as has been alluded to, and Korean FC. And one of the stories that he did tell about himself was of a particularly dismal performance against Porter Down one day, where he tried to leave early and the stewards accompanied back into, him back into the, into the showgrounds. I, the East Derry constituency and this house, will miss David deeply. And we were much enriched for having known him. And can I offer my sympathy to Nora, uh, to Con, and to Alan and the entire McClarty family? Dolores Kelly, Mrs. Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, can I join with all others to express my and the party's condolences to uh, Norma and uh, her, her sons and the loss, not only to the family of David, but also to the many constituents, because it's quite clear he wasn't held in very high regard by the people who, as others have said, elected him as an independent. He stood for what he believed in, and people stood with him. And uh, I think um, his uh, showmanship skills and his actor and oratorial skills were uh, well regarded in this place, which some might say is one of the biggest theatres that there is across uh, Northern Ireland. But he, he did uh, himself and his uh, family proud. Uh, Mr Speaker, it is on days like this that you are proud to actually be a politician because we can see the public service that David gave and the difference that he made in his contribution to public life. And I think it's important on days like this to note the sacrifice that Norma and her, their sons made in all of those times when David had to go out to meetings to meet constituents, to represent them and actually help them to, to actually uh, cope with whatever stresses or strains that they were faced with. So it is uh, with deep regret uh, that we note uh, the passing of David McClarty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ross Hussey. Mr. Hussey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I begin by expressing my sincere sympathy to the McClarty family? And as I stand here today and look over into this corner, there certainly is a light missing from that corner. The last day that David McClarty was in this house, or one of the last days, he was applauded as he returned to the house. A man that had strong convictions in many ways, and a man who was determined to do his best for East Londonderry. And I can see him sitting there today smiling when he got the Deputy First Minister to refer to East Londonderry. And I'm sure that would have brought a smile to his face as it did to mine. Many times as we sit in this chamber, there can be times when there's anxious, when you're, you're upset, you're wondering what's going to happen next, or perhaps we're waiting for a, a vote. David used to regularly come over here, uh, maybe sit beside myself and Mrs Dobson, and tell us a joke or two. And as Mr. Mc, Mr. McNary has already said, it was difficult at times not to start to giggle. And some of them were that difficult, you nearly had to eat your handkerchief. But he was one of those men who made you smile. We will all have very fond and happy memories of David. His family will have many happy memories over the coming days. And towards the end of his life, I regularly kept in touch with him on Facebook. And he never felt sorry for himself. 
He was always that same positive man. Those memories will stay with me. That corner is now that little bit darker. But to the, to the McCarthy family, you will always have that light of the life of the late David McCarthy, MLA. Thank you. Judith Cochran. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to say a few words in tribute to David. Um, he was one of the first MLAs that, um, outside my own party that I got to know um, when I came to the, the Assembly um, through being on Social Development Committee with him and as well as travelling on that important delegation to Kosovo, as, as you've already mentioned. I was impressed always with the manner in which he carried out his public duties and also with his sense of humour when there were difficult issues or differences of opinion. He stood up for what he believed in and was firm but always well-mannered and respectful to those um, who, ha who had differing ideas. He and I didn't always agree on everything but when, when we didn't he liked to banter me about the fact that we had to get on because we are related, albeit distantly through a McClarty Cochrane marriage a couple of years ago. Having attended the service of Thanksgiving for his life last Tuesday, um, it's very clear that he will be fondly remembered, not just by the people here um, in, in this house, um, but also the wider community. And um, We will continue to remember Norma and the rest of the family in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to uh, allow uh, a short tribute from myself uh, to late David McClarty. I knew David uh, over a period of over 20 years, uh, first through local government. <clears throat> he was a very successful mayor of, of, of Coleraine. Uh, and I can remember um, at the outset, I suppose, of the political and peace process, uh, John Major, the Prime Minister, invited the mayors and the chairmen of all of the local councils of Northern Ireland to, to, to 10 Downing Street. And uh, we had good fun uh, in the margins of that. Um, but David, uh, I found as a colleague, as a party colleague, uh, for many years he was a very loyal colleague uh, and indeed uh, he was a very great friend. Uh, he had a very moderating influence and always had a very positive outlook. Even in challenging times and challenging decisions it had to be reached. Um, he, uh, of course, uh, it is worth saying that this assembly needs people and needed uh, and continues to need people like David McClarty for those reasons. Could I say that he had other great interests, not least uh, his family, his, uh, his wife uh, and uh, his boys, uh, of whom he spoke often and was so very proud, uh, and rightly so, for their uh, many achievements. Um, but he also uh, was uh, a man of the stage, um, a very great actor. Uh, in uh, I suppose there are some who regard this place as a palace of varieties and, and, uh, and a lot of actors about, but he, he had genuine talent uh, as an actor. Uh, and, and certainly um, in a place where people often describe politics as show business for ugly people, uh, he had no, uh, he, uh, there was no doubt uh, his ability uh, in terms of uh, his performance. But whilst he was an actor, he was never false, and I think that's uh, a, an important and very critical uh, difference. Um, he loved uh, acting as MC, or uh, uh, he loved performing uh, at other functions, both uh, within the assembly and uh, on a wider basis. And his joke telling and storytelling were uh, were legendary, uh, and uh, they, they brought comfort and enjoyment to a great many people. Um, I think he also loved Coleraine Football Club and, as we've heard, Manchester United. And as a long-suffering Arsenal fan, trophyless for so many years, David was never slow uh, in reminding us as to how many trophies Alex Ferguson had, uh, had won, although Coleraine didn't seem to have the same um, <laughs> magical uh, 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 abilities. However, um, he had the ability to lighten conversations, uh, to be positive. It was, Mr. Speaker, a privilege to know him, to work with him, and to count him as a friend. George Robinson. Mr. Robinson. Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, could I also, like the rest of the members of this assembly, express my sincere condolences to David's wife, Norma, two sons, and the wider family circle? David and I had a great passion as football supporters, namely our beloved Coleraine and football in general. 
As most people have said, a gentleman who will be greatly missed by us all. Thank you. Order members, in accordance with the Convention, as a mark of respect for Mr McClarty, the sitting will now be suspended until 1.20. The sitting is suspended. <laughs>